Hi, Ashley here with hearthookhome.com and today we are learning my five rules of changing colors when you're crocheting a corner to corner graph gan. Graph gans can be kind of intimidating because the colors change in the middle of the row instead of at the end. Um, so I've got a few different things that I always do. This video goes hand in hand with a, an article I published on my blog about changing colors in corner to corner crochet and I will include that in the link below. So the very first thing, I have five main rules. Number one is that when doing a graph gain or when doing a corner to corner at all, I only do, some people will tell you to chain six to start this new block or new row, and some people will tell you to chain five. I always do five because I feel that um, if I did six, the holes in between each um, block would be a lot bigger. So I only do five. It helps to keep the blanket a little bit tighter, but it also helps you to keep your color changes less obvious because if the holes are smaller, then your color changes will obviously be smaller, if that makes sense. So definitely do the five and two. You don't have to, but that is my personal rule. Um, now, also when I'm changing my colors, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple blocks while I'm talking to you and so we can get ready for the color change. Um, while I do my color changes in regular crochet, I do do um, pull through on the last loop with the new color, okay? So I do not complete the stitch. I pull that new yarn color through the very last pull through, and I have a video for that as well if you're confused. Um, but on a corner to corner graph gan, I do not pull through on the last. I pull through with the slip stitch. And I don't know why I do it that way. Um, I think I just started that way, and now that's the way I do it, and it always turns out beautifully for me, so that's why I have it as rule number two. Um, so now, now that I have two blocks here, I'm going to create two in blue, and then I'll do two more in white. So instead of tip number three, or rule number three, is that you should not carry your yarn too far. Now normally, um, if you were changing colors and you only had a few stitches, then you could carry that yarn and use the new color to crochet over the white right, kind of weaving it in place. Um, with a corner to corner, I don't do that because if I were to carry this yarn, this white, from here to here, because I'm gonna do two blue, if I were to carry that all the way here, I would have to weave in around this and then around this and then carry it up here. And it's just very cumbersome for me. And I find that um, my color changes, it either puckers real bad when I go like this, it just kind of puckers it together, or it just looks sloppy. So I, I, I do have to weave in more ends this way, but my pieces look much more professional. So I do it anyway. Um, so I've cut my white yarn, okay? And I'm going to use a bobbin. Bobbins are essential, um, especially if you're not carrying your yarn too far. Bobbins are very helpful because instead of every time you turn your piece and all of the yarn just gets tangled, like we get this blue in here and let's say we have a purple in there and we have a pink and every time you change your direction, your yarn is going to get even more and more tangled. So I use these little guys. And one way that you can look ahead um, to figure out how much yarn you need to wind on here, personally, when I crochet a corner to corner, I know that when I use this hook and this yarn, I need about 20 inches of yarn to do one block, okay? Yours is going to be different. It's all just based on how tightly you crochet. But I know that if I need six blocks on this row coming back up, then I need to wind enough yarn for six blocks. Okay, and if you're following a chart, you can easily decide that because it will show the pictures for you as you go along. So if you know you need six, we're gonna wrap it around. Literally just wrapping the yarn. Once it gets a little big to where it starts slipping, I turn it a little bit and go this direction. And then if that starts going a little funky, I can go back the opposite direction and wind it up. So now I've got my bobbin. What I love about using these, and I've got a whole entire post on these as well, but what I love about these is that they literally clip on like that. So now I can turn it, I can move it around, I can do whatever, and it's not going anywhere. So it's a lot easier than having like 10 different strands of yarn coming off of here and just making it spaghetti. So now I have, um, I'm going to change to my blue. So let me pull my blue over here. So I've got my yarn tail. I'm going to just pull it up with the slip stitch all the way through both sides, okay? And now I'm going to do my new block in blue and I'm going to crochet around that yarn tail, okay? So just kind of weaving it in. So I'm gonna chain two to start my new block and then I'm going to 
double crochet three times around this chain, including the yarn tail. So I do one, two, three. Now I'm going to lay that back so this is just going to be an end to weave in later. Okay, but I'm going to go to the next block and we're going to do a whole new complete block. And then I can change back to white if I wanted to. So I will um, grab a new white. Okay, so here's a new tail of white. So I'm going to pull that through that slip stitch and I'm going to crochet around this tail just like I did with the blue when I changed that color. And now with the blue, I may or may not, depending on how many color changes are around that, I may or may not make the bobbin um, a blue bobbin as well. Um, it really just depends because if I have a whole bunch of blue coming up, like if I had a whole square that was going to end up here with white around it I would have lots of or one bobbin of white on each side and then I might just leave this attached to the actual yarn ball so that I didn't have to make a new bobbin every time if I know that I have a ton of that color coming up then I'll just leave it because as long as I've got bobbins on everything else I can turn this and the blue really doesn't matter because the bobbins are self-sustaining if that makes sense okay so let me make this last white one and then my last cardinal rule of crochet corner to corner is not to weave in your ends too soon. Okay, I know that's almost painful, but I find that if I weave in my ends too soon, like if I went ahead and we wove in um, this blue right here, that might be okay. But if I weave in like this one, I'm going to go ahead and pull it tight. You can see it's a little holy right here. I'll go ahead and pull that a little bit tighter and it just kind of cinches that up and it makes everything just nice and pops, right? So we'll pull this white a little bit where that changed. We'll pull this blue a little bit. When I go in to weave in my ends, I like to wait until I've got several rows past that point because if I start weaving in all of these and then I come back, it might make it too tight in one area or too loose in another or it might pucker a little bit in certain places. So I don't weave them in too soon, but I also like to weave in as I go. So once I get about 10 rows in, I'll weave in the first five or six rows um, just because I, I can't do weaving in in huge uh, batches because I either need a lot of wine to do that or um, I need to be super bored so which does not happen very often so wine it is but um, pull these tight and it just night keeps helps to keep those nice and clean little edges when we pull this one too boop, it kind of pulls that corner down to where you can't even see where the color changes were so I hope this helps. Um, definitely read the post that goes along with this. And if you need help with getting started on a corner to corner in general, I do have that um, posted on hearthookhome.com as well and a video. And I, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Shoot me an email, leave a comment, and I will get to you as soon as possible. Thank you.